Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another My Coach episode. So today's episode, we are taking on the Geelong Football Club. Um, Geelong aren't doing too well at the moment in the standings. As you guys can see, they're 2-5. and five. They're currently 17th, but I definitely think this is a danger game considering they've got players like Gary Ablett, Patrick Dangerfield, Joel Selwood, um, Josh Jenkins is in there, Jack Stevens. So this is definitely going to be a tough game. Um, we have received some bad news, which I'll show you in just a quick sec. Um, pretty bad news for the... It's probably the, the worst news we've, we've, we've copped all series. But um, we are currently sitting sixth on the ladder. We just come off a draw to uh, the Melbourne Football Club. So we've had two draws this year against the Giants and uh, the Ds, And then we had our close loss to the Pies. So the last few weeks have been pretty tough for us. Um, we want to get off to a good start. We definitely want to bounce back. And we definitely do not want to be falling um, down the ladder considering uh, we, we want a top four position. That is what we want. Now, when I was talking about bad news, I went into my injuries. And as you guys can see, Orazio Fantasia, 17-week injury. Um, I'm pretty disappointed, pretty upset considering that is probably the whole season. We probably won't see Raz now to the finals if we do make it. Um, he got injured in the game against the Ds. I didn't think it was that serious. Um, but we will not be seeing Orazio. So, pretty damper news, but let's get into team selection. So, in comes Dyson Heppel and Mason Redmond. So, Mason, Red Mason Redmond returns from suspension. Heppel returns from injury. Uh, Jordan Ridley omitted and Raz O injured for 17 weeks. So, let's start from the back line. Connor McKenna, Michael Hurley... Marty Gleason, Paddy Ambrose, Carl Hooker, Mason Redman back from suspension. I think he got suspended in the Anzac Day Clash. Dyson Heppel, Andy McGrath, and Darcy Parrish on the wing. Devin Smith, Sean McKernan, Jake Stringer, Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody, Joey Danaher, Jacob Townsend in the forward pocket. Now, I've seen a few people say they want Jacob Townsend on the field, so he's going to be getting the starting considering Raz is out. Bell Chambers, Zach Merritt, Dylan Shield, and on the bench, Tommy Cutler, Irving Mosquito, David Zaharakis, and Kyle Langford. So, still a pretty strong team. We still have Adam Saad to come back, but having no Raz is really, really upsetting. Um, he was one of our best this year. I think he was in the J21 votes right up there. So, it is pretty disappointing considering uh, just how well he's playing to start this season. But let's get into the Bombers and the Cats in a must win clash for the Dons. Hudson. Joined now by Gary Lyon. Thanks, that know. Should be a great game today. Today we have Geelong coming up against Essendon. Well, we all know who should get the job done, but it's shaping as a very interesting matchup. Both sides look ready to get into the action just moments away now. So here we go. We're ready to get going for the round. Uh, another round in this My Coach series. Darcy Paris straight out of the middle of the Bombers. So this game started off a bit... I feel like we struggled a little bit early on. Um, I couldn't really get a lot going for the Dons. Um, it felt like the Cats just own possession in probably the first like five minutes of this game you see here they have a shot on goal 
uh, for the first score of the game. Luke Dalhouse does not get that to go. So it's one point, and here come the Dons. So Dylan Shield was really good in this opening turn. Sean McKernan back to Shield. He gets hammered in the tackle, but Joey Danaher, uh, we were messing around with it, but Dylan Shield gets it forward, and Jacob Townsend, who everyone was been raving about, get him on, start him, have him on the ground, has a chance to kick our first goal. It was poor delivery by me, poor timing, and Jacob Townsend misses to the left-hand side. So this first quarter is basically how we've been kicking this entire season. Uh, Tommy Bell Chambers has a chance to kick a goal, misses around 25, 30 metres out. Um, currently, I don't really understand how he missed this. Look at Dangerfield. Now, Dangerfield was really good early, but Darcy Parrish was was probably better. You see a nice little kick from Parrish up the, up the field. Um, he was awesome in his first term on Dangerfield. Dangerfield is just a freak. Uh, Darcy Parrish was really tackling him hard. As you see here, Tipper kicks the first goal for the Bombers. 1-3-9 to 1 behind. We have a nice lead. And Parrish was just burying Dangerfield at, at every single contest. You see here, smash him into the turf. No prior. As we're moving into the later stages of this first, first term, Anthony McDonald, Tipper Moody, lovely kick to Joey. Joey takes a mark and has it, plays on, has a chance, and kicks it left. We had so many opportunities to put the Cats under a lot of pressure. Kyle Langford kicks it forward, but um, out the back, Devin Smith running to an open goal. There's no way Devin is going to miss this one. Kicks the goal, and the Bombers have the perfect start against this. I, I do believe this Geelong team will be up there later on in the, in the season. Um, they are a very good team. But at quarter time, the Bombers lead by 14 points. We got off to a pretty good start. Um... Tipper, Darcy Parrish, definitely our best um, at quarter time. Two behinds, we kept the Cats goalless to the Bombers, 2-4-16. Nine inside 50s to 5, 45 disposals to 37. We're really on top in after probably the first five minutes. Jacob Townsend, five disposals, Tipper, four. Connor McKenna, good off the off the back line with three. And Devon and Tipper have kicked our goals. So we go into the uh, second quarter here. The Cats basically were doing what we normally do, we're wasting opportunities. They, they own the footy. Uh, Menegola from the from the pocket, very tough kick, almost gets it to go, but they finally get one on the board. They were peppering the scoreboard uh, through Gary Gary Rowan off the ground, brings the game back within seven points. But here we come, here come the Don. So nice little handball from Tipper. He gives it back to McGrath, and right at the back here is Joey and Tipper. So we can, surely we could not stuff this up. We almost stuff it up. Tipper picks it up, gets it to go, and it goes off and it dribbles through. So thank God that goes through for a goal. I was worrying that we'll we're definitely going to stuff it up. We're going to do something. But Tipper was really good. Um, we had so many chances. Like, look at here. Tommy Bell Chambers, second point of the second point of the game. Um, we had multiple chances to, to get away. But we definitely were peppering. Look at Irving. Irving turning on the Jets. I'm so excited to have Irving on this team. Look at him. Oh, it's the post. That would have been an awesome goal. Um, we get a free kick here, holding the ball. Great tackle from Devin Smith, who was good in this game as well. Um, he's about 35, 40. Well, he's about 40 meters out, you could say. Um, he's been really good in front of goal this season. He definitely will be up there with the leading goal kicking with, Ar with Arazio out. We're going to need him to kick a lot of goals if we're going to be any chance to win games. Great goal there from Devin Smith as we move in to close to half time. Uh, the, we left the Cats off the hook. Um, I thought we are going to go in with around a 22-point lead, a good four-goal lead, but the Cats here, um, Hurley just can't defend one-on-one. -on -one. He actually can't defend in real life one-on-one -on -one as well, um, but... I think Hurley's best thing is, is coming across and, and spoiling and, and intercepting because he's been pretty good for us this season. But at uh, halftime, we lead by 17 points over the Cats. Um, pretty good uh, first half for us. You can see there, four goals, nine. We definitely need to improve that to two goals, four, 16. Um, 22 inside, 50s to eight, and we only hold a small lead. But Andy McGrath being pretty good. Zach Merritt pretty good as well. Devin Smith and Tipper both kick. They're, the, they're, they're only goal kickers at this point. Um... If we are going to go deep in September and challenge teams, we need more than two goal kickers. Inside 50 here, this is a lovely little handball from Andy McGrath to Darcy Parrish, who was probably best on ground in this game. Kicks the goal, a much-needed goal for the Bombers. All our hard work starting to pay off. Um, it it kind of did start to pay off in this term. You see that we do dominate majority of the of the game, but the, the Cats, um, through Josh Jenkins here, kicks a goal, keeps it interesting, because this Geelong team, like I said, they're definitely going to be dangerous, but have... A look at this from the Dons. Have a look at this at the back. Joey Danaher. Everyone just runs past the ball, but not Joey. He runs in, kicks a goal. He's been good since he returned to the lineup. Um, he was injured in the Marsh series. So Joey Danaher kicks a goal. And uh, this is where you can really see the future of the Bombers. Irving Mosquito turns the corner. You're not going to catch Irving. Left foot straight through the middle from Irving Mosquito. His best goal to date. I think he's kicked three goals now for the Bombers. That is his best goal. Look at this. You cannot catch him. Even in slow motion, left foot, 
straight all over the goal umpire's hat and gives us a very commanding lead in this third term. All our hard work was definitely playing off. Um, you can see that if you just keep peppering in the inside 50, something is going to happen. Tip and Woody was really good in this game as well. He kicks his third goal of the night, extends our lead. I was pretty nervous about this game considering how close the other games have been. We needed to shut down this game and shut it down early. But at three-quarter time, the Bombers lead by 33 points. Probably, uh, considering all the, the play we had in this game, um, it was definitely... We, we definitely needed a big lead at, at, at some stage. 8-9, eight, eight, 57 to 3-6. Tom Cutler, 10 disposals. Tip a 9. Heppel, really good as well. Eight disposals, 8 disposals in his return. Dyson Heppel. Now, he's been injured throughout this season. It's good to have him back. It's good to have him healthy. We need to keep him healthy because he is one of our best players. And we definitely need him if we're going to be any chance to, to do anything with all these injuries. But we move on to the last quarter here. Off the ground, Jakey Stringer had a really good game as well. I thought he was pretty good considering he was pretty quiet in the last few games. But the Cats... They don't lie down. It is only it is 33 points. It was 39 points, but they got it down to 33. And Gary Ablett, you cannot leave Gary Ablett on his own in the forward line. Left foot, the little master, kicks a goal. Just to make it a little bit interesting here. Now, I was getting a little bit nervous in this game. I was like, no way this, this Geelong team can come back. But they were just they were rallying on inside 50s. Lucky Jack Stephen didn't kick the goal here. But they had another chance through Parfit. He goes back. He kicks the goal. And they bring it within two goals. So two goals here. We needed something. I was not giving away this game considering how last few games have been. Kyle Langford just gets out on his own. I have no idea. I'm running to the goal square to make sure of it. He kicks the goal. He seals the game for the Bombers. And that is all she wrote. There's no way the Cats were going to come back from that. Um, Dyson Heppel, like I said, was really good in this game. This is definitely not his, uh, his best effort. But um, definitely one of our best on the full. Straight on the full. But... Uh, I am happy with how we finished this game. I'm happy that we ended up running away with the win. Geelong challenged us late. We need to be better. We need to hold on to leads. That is definitely something that we need to change and definitely something we need to improve on. Overall, a good solid win from the Bombers. I'm happy with how we got it done. I'm happy with everything, how it went. Um, I was a bit nervous. I am still pretty disappointed that Raz is out. We still needed... I mean, these injuries, they're going to hurt us. They always hurt the Bombers, and I feel like they're going to hurt us. 10-10-70 to 7-10-52. Jakey Stringer was really good. Dyson Heppel was really good. But Darcy Parrish's job on Patrick Dangerfield was enormous. Um, smashing him into the turf, making him earn his kicks. Um, Tipper kicked three. Devin Smith kicked two. And you see Darcy Parrish has the one. But we had some pretty even statistics, even ev pretty even um, disposal count all round. But I am extremely happy with how it went. So let's move on to J2 on votes. Like I said, Jakey Stringer was pretty good. Some honorable mentions. Joey Danaher was pretty good. Devin Smith is having a very, very solid year. And he's a, he's, he is a massive chance for an award um, at the end of the year if we do awards. He's a massive chance for this for this best and fairest if, um, if he can keep playing. Because you need to reward him. Um, he's, he's been really good for us since he returned. I think he returned round three. So let's get into the votes. Three votes for the Bombers and the Cats. I have decided... You had to give it to Darcy Parrish. He was one of our best throughout the entire game. He'd done a really good job on Patrick Dangerfield. Got, I think, ended up with, I think, 10 disposals. Two disposals he gave to Dyson Heppel. Heppel was really good in this game. Good return. Captain's game. We needed it. And one vote. I've decided. Give it to Tipper. Tipper kicked three. It's his best game probably since round one. He kicked three goals for us, which he needed. Um, let's have a look at the leaderboard. Andy McGrath, Dylan Shields still lead. Adam Saad, who will be returning soon, um, sitting second at the moment. But I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Um, let's wrap this video up. Let's go to the round eight results. Um, the Tigers are struggling big time, as you guys can see. Um, I think Collingwood actually suffered their first loss to the Giants. So Collingwood are not invincible. They can be beaten. They they suffered their first loss of the season. Um, some pretty overall... I mean, you probably could predict some of them results. Carlton are having actually a really, really good season as well. Um, you can see there they beat St. Kilda, but they're having a really, really good season. Um, Melbourne got done by Port Adelaide. Uh, North Melbourne, who will, I think they're sitting maybe fifth. I think they're just above us at the moment if, as we look into the ladder. We actually are playing North Melbourne next week, so I'm looking forward to that as we head over to the ladder. Um, like I said, we're playing North. It is going to be a massive, massive test for us. I feel like these last four four games, they've, they've been against some quality opposition. Yes, Geelong aren't going so well, but they definitely are a good team. So let's look at the ladder. We are currently sitting sixth. Um, North are actually sitting 7th, so with it's 6th place 7th in the next round. It's going to be very, very exciting. We've got some work to do, but we are ready to grind. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to look out for some more. Hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.